The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, To'ohono O'Hodam Nation, Arizona, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 34261. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting just under the front bumper, you'll find two tow hooks open-ended. These are on the passenger and driver's side frame rail. Moving up onto the front face of the bumper, you'll find dual air horns, passenger and driver's side. Moving over to the driver's side on the bumper face, you'll find your PA speaker and electronic siren. As we move up to the top of the bumper extension is where you'll find your hose storage location for your front bumper load. Here's some close-ups of the items we just talked about. First, the two tow hooks at the very bottom section, air horns, and then your electronic siren and PA speaker. Let's move up onto the bumper extension where you'll find your tubbed storage location for your front bumper load. You'll find Velcro ties for securing that front bumper load, and then also just inside you'll find a front discharge inch and a half swivel. Let's move to the passenger and driver's side front section of the cab where you'll find your headlights, low and high beam headlight. On the inside is the high beam. Moving up from that location, the next cluster up is an emergency warning light, and then on the outer edge will be your turn indicator marker light. Let's move up onto the windshield where you'll find three windshield wipers across your seamless one-piece windshield. Moving all the way up above the windshield to the brow of the apparatus, you'll find your five clearance lights. And then as we move up onto the roof of the apparatus, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Let's move around to the side of the vehicle, front bumper extension. You'll find a side-facing emergency warning light. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the cab area. At all points of entry for personnel, you'll find these ground lights located at the very lower section of the step area. You'll also find a marker light at the A pillar. As we move up to the cab doors, you'll find easily accessible latches with a gloved hand you can easily open and close. And then you'll also find their keyed. Grab handles located at all points of entry. As we move just over the front axle, that's where you'll find your auto eject battery charging system and indicator. Moving up to the rear section of the cab, you'll find a side facing scene light. Let's take a look at some close ups. First, your mirror is a two part mirror, flat and convex. And then as we move now to the battery charging location, you'll find the plug in is an auto eject plug and also an indicator. You'll also find once again, your front door locks are keyed entry, easily accessible with a glove tan. As we move to the upper portion of the cab, you'll find a side facing scene light. Let's move to the mid section of the apparatus. First, starting directly behind the cab, you'll find a latch on the walkthrough or pass through area just above the step. You'll also find lighting at every point of entry for steps and also lighting the very back section of the walkway. As we move back to that location for the latch, you'll find a lift and turn latch. This will gain you access into a storage location directly above the step area. Let's move now to the cross lay area. There are two speed lays. As we look to the forward wall, which would be about the operator's knee location, you'll find the two cross lays with speed lay, and then also you'll find retaining straps on the outer edges. The upper section, you'll find the buckle location to release that strap mechanism. As we move to the pump panel, this is gonna be on the driver's side. Let's identify a few items within this area. First, starting with the two two and a half inch discharges. As we move downward from this location and slightly toward the rear, you'll find the Pierce American Flag Eagle. This is your large diameter pump intake. Moving down and forward, you'll find a two and a half inch female inlet. This is the auxiliary driver's side inlet. Here's some close ups of those two and a half inch, color coded and labeled. There are two on this side. You'll also find this warning regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. As we move down to the very bottom, we'll find all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Moving up, you'll find this warning label regarding only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and only after they received proper training. Close up here of the side discharges, once again, color-coded and labeled. 
As we move toward the rear of the apparatus here in the pump panel, you'll find your main pump drain. And then as we move downward, we'll find a caution indicator here and also your main pump shift. Moving down to the lower left, you'll find the red Watrous placard ending the type of pump and transmission you have, and it's a 1,500 GPM pump. Let's take a look at the side vertical wall here where you'll find fold down steps. Those fold down steps do have lights inside them. Got a close up here of that light. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the entire side of the vehicle from the body's perspective. This is going to be on the driver's side, three access doors in addition with SCBA bottle storage. The doors are now in the open position. You'll find LED lighting inside and also adjustable shelving. As we move now to the side just in front of the axle, you'll find SCBA bottle storage with retaining straps for two bottles. In addition, the fill location for the blue DEF cap, also an indication that this is caution def only. Let's move to the rear of the axle. You'll find this storage location for two SCBA bottles with retaining straps. You'll also find the silver cap, which is gonna be our ultra low sulfur diesel. We do have a caution indicator here regarding ultra low sulfur diesel fuel only. And now let's go ahead and move to the rear of the apparatus. We'll identify on the passenger and driver's side, your rear light starting with the emergency brake, turn and a backup light. Those are all in a common bezel. As we move to the top, a emergency warning light. And then as we move further up to the top, you'll find your rear facing scene lights. Let's go ahead and move now, uh, take a couple close ups of those items. First, starting with the brake assembly lights, turn and backup lights. As we move to the very top section of the vehicle, you'll see your 360 degree emergency warning light and then also that rear facing LED backup light. As we move down now to the notch area, you'll find additional fold down steps for getting access to go aloft. There's one in the lower section and two in the upper portion. You'll also find a rear discharge located at the very top. This is a two and a half inch. And then as we move just to the right of this location, you'll find the D handle will gain you access into your ladder storage location. Let's go over a few items within this area. First, we have a 24 foot extension ladder, a 14 foot roof ladder, and then as we move up into the upper sections above the 24 and 14 foot, this is where we're gonna find our 10 foot folding. And then also two locations for long handled tools, pike poles. Let's go ahead and go up on top of the vehicle where we'll identify a few items. First starting in the upper portion of the dunnage where you'll find your tank fill location. You'll also find the fill location for your foam system. Just a reminder, do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. This is your water tank here, also with a screen. And then just to the right, this is your foam tank. As we move uh, just slightly to the right, you'll find additional storage location here in the dunnage area. And then you'll find a large section just in front of this for additional storage. The area is indicating your large diameter discharge master stream device. And then a general view to the rear, we have two dividers for our hose and then also a light in the dunnage area. Let's go ahead and move from the upper section now to the body section passenger side. Compartment doors in the open position, LED lighting inside, adjustable shelving. As we move to the rear axle, you'll find SCBA bottle storage for three SCBA bottles with retaining straps. In front of the axle, three SCBA bottle storage locations, once again with retaining straps. I'd also like to point out the marker light in the lower section. Extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures. This is your exhaust in front of the axle. Be cautious where you park your vehicle, especially during regen operations. Let's move now to the pump panel area on the passenger side. There are two grab handles, one on the upper portion and then one at the lower portion of the pump panel. Let's go ahead and identify a few items within the pump panel area. First, starting with this pan door, a lift and turn latch will gain you access into the pump panel area for visualization. Also to the right, you'll find your cab lift. We'll go over those. First, there is caution and danger information regarding the operation of this. There's also instructions to raise the cab and also to lower the cab. On the left is the protected switch for raise and lower. And in the upper right hand corner, you'll find your activate switch. Just as a reminder, please make sure all items are secured with inside the cab before operation. 
As we move downward from this location, you'll find the two and a half inch passenger side discharge. And then moving further down, we'll find the large diameter passenger side discharge. Just beneath that, you'll find a warning label here regarding pressure hazard. Be cautious, caps may be under pressure when opening them. As we move downward and slightly to the left, we have an additional pan door here for gaining access behind the pump panel. We'll identify its contacts next. We'll also find the Pierce American Flag Eagle. This is gonna be your large diameter pump intake. All of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's go back to that pump panel access door. This is gonna be your relief valve for your large diameter intake. Once again, close up here of the discharge drains. Let's move now just forward of this location, same configuration on the walkthrough compartment, LED lighting in the walkway, and then also that access panel or compartment here. Let's move to the front section of the cab. Same configuration with lighting. Upper rear section of the cab, side facing LED light. As we move to the pump panel, we'll start with identifying a few items within this area. We'll first start on the passenger side of the pump panel, and we'll start with the large diameter pump discharge. You can see the discharge is color-coded to the valve itself. Here's a close-up of that large diameter passenger side discharge, and to the right, you'll find the number two passenger side discharge. Also, further to the right, you'll find your tank fill and recirculating. The black handles do have the ability to rotate the black portion, which will allow you to lock that valve into position. Let's move just to the right of this location where we'll find a few more identifiers, first starting with this black placard. This is your minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. Test pressures are on the left and RPM on the right. You'll also find your deluge discharge primer for your fire pump. It is a push to prime air prime, at least 1000 RPMs for best practices. And then also a fall hazard, never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. As we move to the right, you'll find your tank to pump. And then moving further to the right, we'll find all of our discharges. They are clearly color coded and labeled. We'll move further to the right, we'll pick up the rest of the discharges, and then also your driver's side auxiliary inlet. Let's go ahead and identify a few items within the upper portion, first starting with your pump boss. First, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll find if illuminated, it would be yellow in color is a check engine light. Moving to the right, you'll find a digital readout for the RPM of your engine, and then moving further to the right, if illuminated, it would be a stop engine, which would be red in color. As we move down, you'll find the menu button, which is blue in color, allows you to scroll through the various functions of your pump boss. Directly in the center, you'll find all of your engine diagnostic information. As we move further to the right, you'll find a red silence button. This allows you to silence any audible alarms that may be sounding from the pump boss. As we move down, you have two options, either pressure or RPM throttle mode. Those are the two selectors for that. In the center, you'll find a digital readout and menu information. And then to the right, you'll find a throttle ready indicator. Just beneath that, if you choose to identify having presets for pressure or throttle, this is the green preset button. As we move down to the lower left, you'll find in the very center is the idle position, push in the center to move the vehicle to idle, right to increase, left to decrease on the throttle. And all the way to the right, this is your audible alarm. That's the speaker. Moving further to the right, you'll find panel lights and also an indicator for your pump engaged. It's a green light. As we move to the left, you'll find your engine cooler. This is a twist, not a pull. Moving to the right, you'll find a water tank level indicator from full three quarter, half quarter, and refill red. Moving to the gray area here, you'll find your master intake gauge. And then to the right, you'll find your master discharge gauge. In between the two of those, you're gonna find your test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They are currently plugged and those are for testing purposes. Let's go ahead and move back to the front cab area, driver's area. First, starting with the door panel, we'll find all of our safety and warning information placards attached to the door panel. You'll also find this yellow placard, which we'll go over in just a moment. Let's go over the caution, warning, and also hazard information. These are the placards located on each of the door panels. 
As we move to the manufactured by Pierce for your department, we have the date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation. We also have VIN number, fluid capacities for the components and fluid to capacity types. As we move inside the cab area to the operator seat, you'll find this is an air ride seat. This is an air ride function here on the left. And as we move to the very rear section, you'll find the control mechanism to move the seat front to back. You'll also find the ability to tilt the backrest forward and also backwards. As we move to the steering column, let's start down in the lower left hand corner about the left knee of the operator, starting with our master battery switch. It is the silver on and off switch. You'll also find your engine, transmission, and J1939 diagnostic port for your maintenance crew. And then also some switches down at the very bottom section, which we'll go over next. This is going to be your ABS diagnostics, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, and regen inhibit. The two switches I like to point out are the DPF regen and regen inhibit. Please see your owner's manual for those operations. Let's move just to the right of the steering column where you'll find your pump shift. There are instructions here from road to pump and then also from pump to road. The center selector requires you to lift the yellow section and then engage the downward position to move into the road, into the pump position. On the left, you'll find two green indicators, pump engaged and OK to pump. You'll need both of those indicators illuminating before exiting the cab. To the right, you'll find your main mirror and also convex mirror controls. General view here of the front section of the dash. Let's start first on the left hand side with the start and ignition switch on the left. As we move just to the right, you'll find a switch labeled EM, which stands for Emergency Master, that will engage and also disengage all of your emergency lights simply by one push button. To the right, you'll find your parking lights and also headlights. And then further to the right, you'll find a panel switch allowing you to brighten or dim the lights within preview of the operator. As we move to the dash, you'll find your transmission oil, DEF level, and water temp on the left. To the right, you'll find front and rear air, volts and fuel. Located in the center is your tachometer and speedometer. Diagnostic information will display above and also below the speedometer. Here's an indication when your battery is first turned on and the ignition, it will prove out all of the functions here. And as we move just to the right, I'd like to identify at the very top section. This is your PA and siren. Moving downward, we've got a bank of switches. We'll go over those in just a moment. You'll also find your parking brake, and then to the right, your Allison transmission pad. Let's go ahead and identify a few of those switches here, starting on the left-hand side with the engine brake. This is going to be an on and off switch. To the right, you'll find a settings for that engine brake for low, medium, and high. You have a selector for siren or horn. Same thing, air horn or electric horn, mirror heat, and also load manager. Moving further to the right, you'll find a rotational knob, that is for your windshield wipers, push to apply fluid. You'll find your heat and defrost, and also AC controls directly in front. And then you'll also find overhead all of your control switches for your emergency lights. We'll go over those next, starting on the left with your emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning and upper rear warning. When any of these switches have been engaged, the indicator will illuminate indicating that the switch is active. Let's move just to the right on the same plane as we're on now. First starting with a driver's scene and also passenger scene. There are also future switch locations if you need. Your unit radio, I would like to point out in the very center is a round circular light indicating that you have a compartment door open or ajar and not to move your apparatus. Seatbelt information, red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted, green indicating they're in the seat and belted. Moving to the very rear, you'll find two seats located in the very rear wall with SCBAs. You'll also find two rear facing seats. This is a quick picture here of your AC in the very front section. As we move to the rear of the apparatus, between the two rear facing seats, you'll find this door. This is your access for your daily checks for oil and transmission. As we look to the rear section, just below those seats, you'll find your heater. And then as we move, uh, just a general view of uh, the SCBA seat here on the driver's and passenger side. You'll also find red lens and white lens 
push on or off activated at the lens itself. As we move around to the officer location affixed to the door panel, all of our safety and warning information. This seat also houses an SCBA in the backrest. I would like to point out just underneath this seat is also additional storage location. Lift and turn latch will gain you access into this area. Once again, this is directly under the officer seat. As we move to the A pillar, you'll find the fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. As we move to about the left foot of the passenger, you'll find a foot pedal for your electric siren. Let's move just left of the dash area where you'll find uh, the officer seat upper portion. You'll find in the dash area an air horn push button and then also a 12 volt USB charger plug-in. Looking overhead, push on and off white and red lenses. Congratulations on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus. If you have any questions regarding your vehicle, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.